Good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Lamack. I'm the Chief Curator of History here at the New York State Museum. And we are doing this Facebook Live event because the museum's closed. And we have these wonderful artifacts and displays set up for the public um, before COVID-19 happened. Uh, so we are here to share some of our suffrage artifacts with you and a, a quilt installation from the Susan B. Anthony Museum and House in Rochester, New York that's here on loan. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about one of our most iconic history artifacts, the suffrage wagon, and my colleague Ashley Hopkins Benton will talk about the Susan B. Anthony quilt. So, um, like I mentioned, this is one of our most iconic artifacts in the history collections here at the State Museum. It is the Spirit of 76 wagon. It came to us in 2007. Uh, it was a donation from Marguerite Kearns. Marguerite Kearns was the granddaughter of the family that owned and used this wagon during New York State's suffrage um, campaign. So, um, and Marguerite Kearns and her family were from Long Island. In 1913, uh, this wagon was covered in suffrage banners and hand-painted signs, uh, one that read, if, the te if taxation without representation was tyranny in 1776, why not in 1913? Um, as you can see, the, on the side of the wagon, there is a spirit of 1776, and in the front, there's another 1776. Uh, this was a tactic of the suffragists to equate the suffrage cause with that of the founding fathers. Um, so they, uh, they felt that they were being mistreated and that they should have the same rights and suffrage as men. Um, suff the use of a suffrage wagon was a new tactic uh, for suffragists at the turn of the 20th century. Um, as most people know, the suffrage movement started in New York State in 1848 at the Seneca Falls Women's Rights Convention. Um, but around the turn of the century, there were new tactics that really got the suffrage movement moving and shaking and headed in the right direction. Um, and the new tactic, there were new tactics, one of them being parades. Before 10 years, 20 years before this, uh, women would have never thought of being in a parade. Um, they would have never thought to have an outdoor meeting. Um, so this wagon kind of signals those new tactics that help win suffrage for women in New York State. Um, not only was this used in parades, it was also set up to be used as a speaker's platform. Uh, a lot of women would speak to large crowds, and, this plat and the wagon could be used as a platform to do that. Uh, we have a couple photos of the wagon um, in use, uh, which we're going to show you. And this is the little girl is Serena Kearns, and the two women in the back are Irene Davidson and um, Edna Kearns. And Edna Kearns is the donor's grandmother. Um, and you can see the suffrage, um, there's a suffrage umbrella, and the women are holding votes for women signs. And then the other picture we have here um, is again the picture of the wagon, this time pulled by a horse with a fantastic Votes for Women uh, blanket over it, which I think is fantastic. I am not, I, I assume this photo is from Long Island. Um, it could be some from one of the beaches near um, New York City, but I'm, I'm guessing it's from Long Island. If Marguerite Kearns is on Facebook Live at this time, she could tell us in the um, comments whether where this picture was actually taken. So New York State was ultimately um, pretty important for the 1920 um, amendment when suffrage was finally awarded in 1917. Uh, most of the uh, suffrage leaders and the suffrage workers went on then to help the national movement. 
when suffrage um, was finally awarded in New York State, New York State carried with it 45 electoral votes and 47 seats in the House of Representatives. So New York State was an extremely important state to pass for suffrage. Um, and now, are there questions? Do, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask Dr. Lamack or Ashley Hopkins Benton when we go further. We'll try to answer them as they come in. But we can continue. Yeah. Now we're going to go take a look at the suffrage quilt, which is on loan to us from the Susan B. Anthony Museum and House. And Jennifer, how long will we have these artifacts on display? That's great. Um, so you can still come and see the wagon. It's in the main lobby of the museum. Um, you're not allowed in the museum at this time, but if you're walking or driving up, up or down Madison Avenue, you can still catch a glimpse of the wagon because it's right out front. It will be on display here until about September. And then we're hopeful. It's slated to go to the Long Island Museum uh, for a big suffrage exhibit there. And we're thrilled about that because the wagon is returning to Long Island after 100 years. So we're happy about it, Long Island's happy about it, and our fingers are crossed that that exhibit is gonna happen. They decided that they wanted in some way to commemorate the centennial of the 19th Amendment, um, which was the law that excluded um, excluding voters on the basis of sex. Um, so they put out a call for quilt squares uh, by individual quilters or groups to commemorate achievements in women's rights, to honor women's rights leaders, and also to talk about unfinished business or um, rights that are yet to be won. Um, so our uh, installation here is just 126 squares of the over 300 total that they've gotten. Um, it started very local in Rochester. Uh, local quilt organizations really got the ball rolling. The Genesee Valley Quilt Club was heavily involved. But eventually they put out the call online and we have squares from all over the country. Um, so I wanted to share a couple of them with you, some of the themes that we see through the quilt. Um, so we'll start off down here. There are a number of squares on the quilt that are done in traditional quilt techniques, traditional quilt uh, patterns, um, but they are done in the suffrage colors. The traditional suffrage colors are gold, purple, and white. Uh, the gold represents light and life, and they said that it was the torch that guides our purpose. The white represents purity and the quality of our purpose, and the purple represents loyalty or constancy to, constancy to purpose. So this beautiful square is meant to represent Susan B. Anthony herself, uh, and it was done by Karen Kona. And that's actually perfect because we did get a question about why the colors were chosen and what their meanings were, so thank you. And they did um, say that all of the squares have the purple along the bottom and the left edge, and then the gold along the top and the right edge. So that ties everything together. You'll see that the ties to connect each of the individual quilt squares are also those colors. Um, and the really exciting thing about this is that they can show as few or as many as they want. One quilt square on its own, or you can have all 300 and change uh, that they have in the collection now. So I wanted to point out this one. Um, this one, instead of just looking back at women's rights leaders, it also addresses an issue in the women's rights movement, and that is the racism um, that was apparent um, in the movement throughout. Uh, African-American women were really important in the fight for women's suffrage, uh, but they were often pushed out. They were not allowed as part of official organizations. They were made to march at the back of parades. Um, and this is specifically talking about 1913 in Washington, D.C., when the suffragists, uh, African-American suffragists, had to march at the back of the parade. This quilt square was made by Elizabeth Schoenwolf. And we will share the link later, but the Susan B. Anthony House has a great online gallery of all of these squares as well. So if you want to take a closer look at any of them, uh, you can go on to that. That's actually one of our questions is how and where do you store these artifacts when they are not on display? Well, this artifact um, is not stored here. It's actually stored at the Susan B. Anthony House. Um, they have very limited collection storage. 
Um, but thankfully, when these are flat and boxed up, they don't take up a huge amount of space. So um, I think they thought about that when they thought about what their project was going to be and uh, how they were going to commemorate the centennial. I also want to point out this crazy quilt square. This is actually one of my favorites in the whole quilt. Um, it's again another historic quilt technique um, that they are using to get a message across. And this one is about unfinished business. Um, she talks about, we're losing ground, am I crazy? Um, going with the crazy quilt idea. And this one is by Mary McAvoy. Now, suffrage is not the only focus on this quilt. Um, they talk about other women's rights in the quilt squares. So this one represents Title IX, passed in 1972. Uh, that anniversary is coming up as well, the 50th anniversary. And um, Title IX barred um, banning people on the basis of sex for participation in education, um, which also included physical fitness and sports teams and um, really had wide-reaching impact, especially on New Yorkers. Here. Uh, another kind of crazy quilt square, also talking about unfinished business. Um, this one is by the Darden family, so it's by a whole family of quilters working together. And what I love about this one is they pulled quotes from the 19th century from leaders, including Susan B. Anthony, um, but also they pulled modern things, you know, go march, exercise choice, speak up and speak your mind. Um, so they're really looking to the past to guide their current thoughts on women's rights. Uh, we have two squares here that are related to Susan B. Anthony's partner in crime, Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Um, Stanton was one of the leaders of the 1848 meeting in Seneca Falls, the Women's Rights Convention, and she was the one as they wrote up the Declaration of Sentiments talking about all of the rights that they wanted to achieve that added the right to elective franchise. Um, she felt that that was the only way that women were going to make ground. Uh, so she is commemorated here as well. Um, we also have the leader, leader I.W. Wells. Um, so there's really a great diversity in leaders who are represented on this quilt. And the I.W. Wells square was made by Cassie Phillips and Denise Harrison. So now we'll take a step back a little bit and look upwards uh, we have kind of a grouping of quilt squares that rec represent organizations in Rochester. And I think these are really wonderful because they're all organizations that embody the beliefs and um, the motives that Susan B. Anthony had. So we have a square from the League of Women Voters. We have a square from the Ukrainian National Women's League of America, a square from the Willow Alternatives for Battered Women Shelter, um, and even a square from the Rochester Raging Grannies, which is an activist group. A really diverse collection. In our installation of the quilts, uh, in the center we've located kind of the, the center topics of Susan B. Anthony in Rochester. So Susan B. Anthony made her home in Rochester, Frederick Douglass settled there as well. Um, there were a number of reformers in that, that area um, and we have a lot of squares that represent that. So up here we have the Susan B. Anthony house, a really lovely quilted version of the brick house that she lived in. And it declares it the heart of the women's rights movement. That square is by Nancy Currier. We also have a representation of the flower symbol that represents the city of Rochester. And that one's by Debbie Lester. Um, certainly a symbol that evokes pride for any Rochesterians out there watching. We have the square, honor their struggle and vote, really getting the message of uh, how we should look back at this anniversary and how we can best honor these women who fought so hard for our rights. And that one is by Catherine Greenwald. I love her, we do have Frederick Douglass, as I mentioned, a close friend uh, and ally with Susan B. Anthony, and they worked together on many causes. And we do have a question. Could participants only contribute one square or are there multiple squares made by a single person? There is a bit of both. Um, there are 
individuals who only contributed one square, and there are a number of squares by one person. So This one commemorates the 1848 Seneca Falls Convention, um, really seen as one of the, the beginning vectors of pushing the women's rights movement to the forefront in the 19th century. One of the really big influences on Susan B. Anthony and Matilda Joslyn Gage and Elizabeth Cady Stanton in the 19th century was Haudenosaunee women. Um, so in Haudenosaunee culture, women had political power. Um, there was a much more egalitarian way of life set up uh, in their civilization. And women, well, white women in the women's rights movement really saw that as an inspiration. Uh, so this square commemorates that as well. A nod to women in science. That's by Maria Stevens and Maggie Sim Simmington. I mentioned earlier that we have squares um, from all over the country. So we have kind of a grouping over here of some of the ones that came from other states. We have California and Massachusetts represented. And there are two specifically from Utah, uh, which is kind of interesting. Utah was the first state where women could legally vote in national elections and starting in 1870. Um, so they also were really an inspiration to suffragists working in New York State, uh, looking at what they were doing out there and, and the things that they had achieved. And then the bottom square is also from Utah, and it represents silk that was gifted to Susan B. Anthony for a dress. Um, which is actually in the collection of the Susan B. Anthony House. It's a really interesting story of, and um, Anthony traveled to all of the counties in New York State to speak, but she also traveled around the country to states where they were leading referendums and trying to pass suffrage. Uh, so that, that connection across the country is really important. And then finally, I wanted to show you, we have, uh, again, a little grouping of quilt squares representing young people. Um, so even kids got involved in producing these squares. Um, so this one is called Women's Right to Vote. Um, you can see it has mom and me. And this was draw drawn by, at the time, eight-year-old Mercedes Blowers. And she worked with her grandmother, Joyce Blowers, uh, to put together the quilted image. We also have another young lady who's inspired by the Susan B. Anthony dollar, um, which we've actually, there's a couple of quilt squares in the collection that represent the Susan B. Anthony dollar. This one was by Katrina Courier. Up here we have a representation of two suffragists, a kitten, and 10,000 miles, um, which is a true story of women who traveled on the suffrage circuit across the country. Um, it is also the subject of a children's book, so if you want to learn more, you can take a look for that book. Uh, but that piece was made by Quinton Ar 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 Arancino, um, who was a member of the Creators Loft Sewing School. Um, and likewise, another member of the Creators Loft Sewing School, uh, this square is created by Julia R. R. Dudley, who was 11 at the time that she made the square, and it represents everyone is equal. We do have a question about how you selected the order and clusters of the quilt. Was it done by you or was it already decided? I did arrange the squares. Um, the Susan B. Anthony House didn't send us the whole 300. Um, we knew, we did the math ahead of time um, with our exhibit designers and we knew we could only exhibit um, this many that you see on the wall. So they sent us probably 20 more than you see on the wall, and that was a tough decision of what was going to be included and what wasn't. But we laid out a grid pattern on the floor. Um, we organized them. We had to think about our visitors. So any of the squares, um, like this one that you can see with Frances Ellen Watkins Harper, has really small printing. That had to be in the second row because it's the only place that you could really see it well as a visitor. It has such small printing. Um, we have ones that have really big, bold designs. You can go up and you can see there's a tie. Uh, there's a great big thank you to a number of the women leaders in the women's rights movement. Um, so those we were able to hang up near the ceiling. And then we also, we thought about um, if we were giving tours, how we might want to talk about themes as you saw me do here. So we grouped some of them together. 
Um, we also spread them out a little bit. Um, we had a number of images of Susan B. Anthony, so if you look along the quilt, those are all, they, they appear along one row, and you can see them over and over, um, kind of a bit of repetition. And we even thought about things like spreading out the colors. So most of them are purple, gold, and white, but there are a couple that have red, which really jumped off the page, uh, so the red ones had to be spread out. If anybody has any more questions, either for Ashley or Jennifer, you're welcome to ask. And again, Jennifer and Ashley, can you let us know how long these exhibits will be up? The quilt, unfortunately, was only slated to be up at the State Museum to the end of April, and we will be closed through that time. So we are in conversations very regularly with the Susan B. Anthony House. They very rightfully want to exhibit it in Rochester during their tourism season, um, but of course so much is up in the air. We don't know at this point. So we'll share more when we learn more. And we'll post a link to their website in our comments below so that you can see the quilt in its entirety on their website and see some of the details today, from today. Anything else? No. And like I mentioned earlier, the suffrage wagon uh, will be on display in the main lobby of the museum through the summer, um, and then it will be handed down to the Long Island Museum in October, I think October through January. Um, and then we have plans to put it on permanent display in our gallery renewal. So once we get that on permanent display, we will be thrilled. Excellent. Thank you both very much. Thank you, everyone, for watching today. And please check back for more videos. This video and our other Facebook Live field trips will be available on YouTube. So please enjoy and come back and visit more often. Thank you.